Dear ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, good evening, good morning. I hope that all of you are doing well. I'm Dominic Platner, the ITTF High Performance Manager, and I am very happy and proud to warmly welcome all of you to our 14th ITTF High Performance and Development webinar with the topic Basic Knowledge, Video and Performance Analysis. I want to talk uh, shortly about our webinar code, about our rules. <laughs> and turn off the video. Just the guest's micro and webcam will be on. Please don't stop recording our presentation slides. And please leave your questions in the chat. We will try to answer as many as possible in the question and answer part of the webinar. Thank you very much. Over to the introduction of our today's guest. I would like to warmly welcome Michael Fuchs from Germany. He is a Master of Education in Informatics and Maths and uh, currently writing his PhD. And the topic is Game Analysis in Top Level Table Tennis. Writing it the Chair of Training Science and Sport Informatics at the Technical University of Munich. Furthermore, he is the national coach uh, in doing the analysis in para table tennis in Germany. And he is a committee member of the ITTF Sports science and medical committee. Uh, below you can also see his research gate page. And beside that, he has been heavily involved in table tennis as a coach for the last years. Thank you very much, Michael, for taking the time. Nice to hear and see you. Last but not least, I warmly welcome our experienced ITTF high performance elite coach Massimo Constantini. Pass over to you, Max. Hello, hi to everyone, wherever you are, and uh, thank you very much, Dominique, and thank you very much, uh, uh, Michael Fuchs, for uh, being with, uh, with us for this very expecting, very interesting, uh, let's say, table tennis knowledge. Now, we, we, have, uh, we have discussed so many times regarding the, the performance uh, uh, in table tennis, uh, we have uh, we have had the players, uh, coaches, and today we have uh, a great expert with us. And uh, yeah, really eager to 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 hear from uh, from him. And uh, thank you very much again. And thank you very much to all the attendees to be with us. And uh, back to you, Dominic. Thank you very much, Massimo. Especially the, the top level can't be imagined without the video and performance analysis. In, in many cases, uh, it makes the difference in the field of professionals due to the reason uh, that at the end of the day, each professional is well prepared. With the help of the video and performance analysis, the one or other small details could be found, which can be seen as this 1% that is needed to be better than the opponent. Nonetheless, young athletes should be taught too, to get to know how to proceed with tactical analysis and how to prepare themselves for matches in a professional way. We are very much looking forward to hear Michael's approaches related to this topic. So, uh, thanks Dominic uh, for the nice introduction and thanks Massimo also for this nice introduction. Um, thanks for having me today. Um, a warm welcome, of course, to all of uh, the attendees and participants from all over the world. I'm really glad um, to see so many people here, uh, known people, new people. Um, it's really a pleasure for me to be here today and to share some of my knowledge and experience about performance analysis and also one particular approach of that uh, video analysis. Um, for the outline of the today's um, presentation or lecture, um, first, I will talk about some really basics um, of performance analysis, not specifically in table tennis, but more in general. From my point of view, which is, of course, influenced by my scientific background, and um, we will talk about what is performance analysis, what is maybe the key part of it, why should we do it, or what is the motivation to do it, what can be application areas, or who can get a benefit from that, and um, what aspects are actually or can be actually analyzed. And of course, the last point, how we do it or what are possible methods and with some examples or approaches also in table tennis. Um, the, the following point will be more in detail about the, the video analysis in table tennis and, and what might be like a comprehensive approach in table tennis. Um, and at the end, I will 
yeah, give some general comments or share some of my practical experiences. What what I think is important for for the the people who want to do it. Um, some participants of you may have some experience in the field. Some may not. And um, unfortunately, in in a lot of sports, performance analysis is still quite underrated. If it's a sport where there's not so much money in it or it's not so popular, um, yeah, performance analysis is actually not there too much. But the wind is changing a little bit. And if you're a coach or if you're working as a coach, you're already doing performance analysis every day, if even if you're not aware of that. So, so, but performance analysis can also be interesting if you're not a coach and if you're working in table tennis in an, in another po position. So the, the presentation contains real basics for the new ones in the field, but hopefully I can give also um, some ideas uh, for already experienced ones. So the first point I want to talk about is uh, what is performance analysis? So if you're yeah, reading some literature or looking in the internet, there are many different definitions of performance analysis. Um, one very popular researcher, Peter Donahue, tried to, to define it as follows, that sports performance analysis is a discipline of sports science concerned with the analysis of the actual performance. And this is usually done through observation of the performance, which could be live or post-competition if it has been video recorded. So this is a very generic definition. And actually to give a more detailed definition, it's, it's not that easy because sports performance analysis covers many different things or can cover many different things. Thus, it's, it's a, a more detailed definition is also depending on the actual application. But the, the main point of the definition is that actual performance is analyzed. So what does it mean? Actual performance, um, yeah, it's, it's usually not about a laboratory experiments or self-report studies like interviews or questionnaires. Um, it's more about performance in competition, performance in training. And sometimes if it's not possible to, to measure things or to observe some things during competition or training, sometimes also laboratory are, are uh, included in the performance analysis uh, field. For example, if you want to measure some strength things, um, it's, it's uh, impossible to do this during competition. But the main part is that actual performance is analyzed. So the next point is why we do we do sports performance analysis or why should we do it? So athletes and coaches, they need to make decisions every day about preparation, about competition. And the thing is, good decisions are based on evidence or should based on, on evidence. So um, you can use the performance analysis to provide users with valid, accurate and reliable information about their performances to get this evidence for their decisions. So then we can ask why we need um, performance analysis to get this reliable information. The next point, please. Um, Typical, uh, typical situations in table tennis, uh, one back, one back. Typical situations in, in table tennis is um, you, you want reliable information, of course, but coaches say, yeah, I have the experience. Um, I don't need uh, additional things to do. Or players say, I know my game. I know my opponents already. I, I know how to play against them. But the problem is the, the recallability of humans is limited. Um, there, there, there have been studies, um, for example, in soccer from the from a European um, a Union of European Football Association. They ask national or international qualified coaches to recall all critical uh, situations in a match. And the result was that the coaches could only recall about 60 percent of all critical uh, situations. So this ability is limited. This is a, is a human thing. So it's it's nothing special and nobody uh, should be ashamed of that but this is human and the, the next thing is first it's limited and second we are humans and um, decisions or or things we remember are always affected by emotions so if you're a coach you're coaching in a match of course some points you will remember better and some points you won't remember better so for sure people are yeah remembering in a more often the match ball than the first ball of a match, for example, or in the middle of the match where you think it's not so important. So there's also a lot of misperception or wrong self-perception um, 
for the players or for the coaches. And here you can use the performance analysis to support these problems or to, to support the coaches to overcome these problems. Yeah, so next slide is who uses sports performance analysis or what are the application areas? Of course, the main part is the coaching part. Um, coaches, there, there, there's a typical cycling uh, cycling coaches. You, you're having competition or training, then you, you reflect this competition or the training. You need to make new decisions and then you need to prepare or you're preparing for further competitions or further trainings. So actually, um, it's always about decisions to be made for the future, how to play, how to practice. And this is the primary use of performance analysis to, in the coaching context to provide feedback to players and coaches to helping them to direct the training activity and enhance the future performances in, in the single case. Um, but besides the coaching, which is for sure also, in my opinion, the main part, there are, I would say, a lot of more parts or application areas where you can use performance analysis. And I want to uh, mention four more areas. Um, the first one I want to mention, next slide, next point, please, um, is judging. So um, coaches not do not only coaching, they also need to judge players or also this is for also the, the performance directors or the sports directors in, in the associations. They need to do nominations. They, they have to decide about funding. And of course, it's, it's really helpful if you have reliable information where your decisions can be based on. The next point is media. Of course, if you're watching sport in, in the TV, the TV channels are using uh, match statistics to provide the viewers a better understanding and, and additional information, more or less more for, for pleasure purpose. It's, it's not for uh, enhancing the performance of the, of the spectator in front of the TV. It's more about pleasure. But this is also a big point. If, if you're the, this field or this uh, business is, is very big, for example, in the United States, if you take uh, the NBA or the, the NFL, so this is a big part also of performance analysis. The third point is the academic use. So sports performance analysis is used by researchers who want to get a better understanding of the sport itself. So they, they are using um, big samples for studies to, to get a better knowledge about the sport itself. It's not about the single case to improve the single case. It's more about the, the whole picture. And the last point I want to mention is the education very underrated part in my opinion but very important part because with sports performance analysis um, you can educate athletes but also coaches to get a better understanding and a better knowledge for example by showing them information about their own game by showing them information about different game by showing them uh, information about technique um, but it's not only about showing it's also about letting them do the analysis themselves so if uh, a player is doing analysis by themselves. It's always about, you know, uh, the process by doing it is also increasing his knowledge, his tactical understanding or his technical understanding. So there are different purposes, technical purposes, practical purposes, theoretical purposes. Um, yeah, all these application areas can be important and therefore sports performance analysis can be used. So the next slide, please. So now we talk about what do we actually analyze with sports performance uh, analysis. Um, besides the areas where performance analysis is, is, can be used, uh, a big point is what do we analyze? And the first point is um, the analysis of technique or the, the technical analysis. Um, here it's about, uh, you know, the, the development of athletes doesn't matter if it's a beginner level for, or elite level or in the development from beginner to elite level. The key element is always a good technique in table tennis. So the, the performance analysis or the analysis of technique is used to, to identify flaws in technique, but also to monitor the changes in the technique um, in, during preparation or also uh, during rehabilitation from injury. So the analysis of technique is, is a uh, yeah, basic point. And here it's more about the mechanical detail of the skills performed, for example, the kinematic change and in, chain involved and so on. So this is uh, for sure a very big part, which is daily work of the coach. The second point is 
the tactical analysis. So here you analyze the tactical decisions made in the competition. You want to identify location or placements. You want to identify timings used or the trajectory used in table tennis, how much spin or speed is, uh, is used. Um, but you're also looking for patterns of events um, and, and broader strategies. For example, if a, if a player is more forehand or backhand oriented player and so on. So actually you, you want to describe what tactics are used and this helps the coaches but also the players to better understand the the impact of their tactical decisions and if you know preferred tactical setups by your opponent you can get a better answer on that the third point um, is the analysis of the effectiveness so of course after you know what has been used um, you want to know how effective it was. Um, there you have to make a difference between technical effectiveness and tactical effectiveness. So technical aspects are how effective are the skills performed and how well are they performed according to the outcome. So how successful were a certain technique, for example. The tactical effectiveness is the analysis of passages of play or uh, about certain tactical decisions. So um, how successful were certain placement or certain spin or speed. Um, in table tennis, it's a tricky si thing because um, yeah, tactical decisions are always connected to technical um, parts. That's why we are always talking also in table tennis about technical, tactical um, things, because a technique is always connected in match to a certain placement, for example. So these are always connected together. And of course, one main point of the performance analysis is how effective has my uh, decision spin. So this is the third point. And then I want this, these three points are maybe the main points when people think about uh, performance analysis. But there are two more points I want to mention, which I think are very useful um, and a little bit underrated, but um, yeah, can get a big benefit. And these are the next two points. These are the physiological analysis and the psychological analysis. So. These two points um, as the technical or tactical analysis is always in cooperation with coaches or players. Um, these two points might be done in cooperation with the strength and conditioning team or with the psychologist of the team. So for the physiological analysis, you want to an analyze like velocities or speed or strength. Um, and this is important because, for example, for injury prevention or to enhance physical conditions, by providing additional information relating to strength and power and endurance and agility. And the same for the psychological aspect. Um, I would say very underrated, but this is uh, also one point, point which might make the difference at 9-9, who has the better mental game. And with psychological training or mental training, you can improve this. And here, performance analysis can support in this process. So most often, um, Performance ana analysts are working together with the psychologist and providing, for example, video sequences um, to, to highlight certain, certain um, behaviors or that player and psychologist can, can talk about this behavior and talk about pressure, for example. So this is a very important point where, again, um, performance analysis can support. So performance analysis, you, you have to mention this is one part of the big puzzle and, and performance analysis can actually support and improve various areas of daily work. It's not a standalone thing where you do the analysis and then it's everything is good. You always want to support certain areas and this is why you should do it. So next slide, please. So then the important point, of course, after we have uh, talked about what can be analyzed, is uh, of course how a sports performance analysis is done. Um, and first I want to talk about the, the phases of performance analysis. So what is actually part of the performance analysis work because it's not only the analysis itself. And I think um, you really need to separate um, these phases to understand the importance of each part. So please the first uh, part of the slide. Um, is the, the data gathering. So the, the first part of the work is always the data gathering. And this can be completely individual process. Data gathering is also 
watching matches or watching um, training, but it can be also recording the matches with videos, but also um, gathering data with pen and paper, making notes and so on. So this is all part of the of the data gathering and this is part of the work of a performance analyst. So and this is where the, the whole process starts. The next part is the analysis. Of course, um, you need to take this footage and this note and the analyst or the coaches takes this note footage um, and analyze the data he gets. And each coach or each analyst is looking for different information. And this is always depending um, what information I get so I can analyze uh, the respective things. So, so that's why data gathering is also so important because you can only do analysis from the data you get. Um, of course, we have different possibilities of how we analyze the matches, which I will ex explain in the next slide. So, and maybe the, the most important point, um, because without this part, the complete process would be would be senseless or useless, um, is the third part of the, the performance analysis work. And this is the communication and presentation of the information to the coaches and players. Um, yeah, it, it, it's completely senseless if the analyst or the coach knows all the information, has done the, inform, um, the analysis, but cannot communicate it to the player. So, so it's, it's necessary to, to make it in a way or to communicate or present it in a way players or coaches or other stakeholders understand this information. And again, this is very individual. You know, you have quite clever players. You have maybe players who are not that clever or experienced. You have stakeholders um, who are completely not into table tennis, but they have to make decisions about nomination or, or funding. So you have to present this always in an individual way. And this is also a skill a performance analyst or a coach needs to have. Um, after this general workflow, um, there are two general types of methods for data gathering and analysis. And the first one are the quantitative methods. The next slide, please. Um, so quantitative methods, um, the most famous one is the notational analysis. So I would call it or uh, describe it as systematic game observation. And this notational analysis is an objective way of recording performance by notating particular elements like events or action. And by notating these action or events, performance can actually be quantified in a consistent and reliable manner. And to, to make it reliable and objective, this observation has to be standardized. So next point, please. Um, but what does standardized mean? Um, standardized in the notational analysis means that the observed variables are fixed in advance. So you're not doing freestyle. You, you, you know exactly what to look at. If possible, you want to avoid human judgments, but of course, um, if the analysis is not done by a robot or automatically by software, you need a, a human who is doing the observation. And if a human is involved in the observation, you need detailed guidelines how to do it. So the observer needs to follow detailed guidelines. And for this, sometimes the observer, of course, needs some knowledge. So um, you have the guidelines, um, what to, to observe, but of course the, the observer needs to know what is a topspin, what is a smash, what is the difference between them. And um, with, if you have these guidelines, it's rather a measurement than an opinion of the observer. And um, standardized means as well, you have predefined elements. So, and there you decide, or you, you make a difference between three different elements. The first one is the observational unit. So what is the unit you're actually looking at? In table tennis, in most cases, it's the rally or it's the stroke. And each of these unit has certain attributes. So if you take the stroke as a unit, one attribute is the technique. And this attribute has then different levels what you can observe. So for the attribute technique, you have different levels like topspin, block, smash, and so on. But these are things who need to be predefined. So again, you have to follow these guidelines. And if you do this standardized notation in a complete way, it enables quantitative feedback that is accurate and objective. So next thing, next point, please. Um, and this is the, the, the main thing with these notational and quantitative methods. You get 
accurate and objective feedback on the performance and game behavior. Um, and it's a complete representation because if you if you're doing it not standardized, you forget things, and then again this limited recall thing is is coming into play. Um, so this is why you use these quantitative methods. Um, in the particular case, these methods are not um, connected to a, to a particular technology. So you can do it uh, on paper. Next point, please. Um, but you can also do it uh, computer based using Excel sheets or using um, specific software. So you're completely free in your process. Um, you can use paper, you can use a computer, you can use a general software like Excel, but you can also use specific software which is developed for this sport. Uh, and of course, with all these different technology, you can do it live or you can do it with video footage. Um, yeah. Uh, next uh, slide. Um, now I will I will give some some examples about quantitative approaches in table tennis. So the first one I would call the the classical notational analysis. Um, here you see see your Excel sheet and um, uh, followed the the guidelines for the observation. Um, each rally has been observed, and each rally's rally has different attributes like the server, the winner of the rally, how many strokes were in the rally, and for example also the serve technique or the receive technique. So these are all attributes with different levels. For example, for the surf technique as an attribute, one back, please. Um, you, you can see that you, the observer can always choose between pendulum surf, reverse surf, tomahawk surf, but these has, are the elements who are predefined. So of course, the observer needs to follow the guidelines and needs to know what kind of surf is it, but then he has only the predefined options to notate it. And if you have done, this notating of the complete match. Next point, please. Um, then you get objective, objective statistics or incidences about all kind of variables you are interested in, and of course about the variables you have notated before. So this can be um, complete statistics about the incidences of placements, or about used serve techniques um, or receive techniques. If you next point, please. Um, if you see uh, at these tables or graphs. So, um, but one thing is, one more please. Um, if you uh, look at the third picture here, the graph, you can also do, because it's a quanti quantitative uh, method, you can always combine things quite easily. So in the third graph, for example, you see the, the techniques used for receive, but you also see um, the outcome. So you can combine the actual methods, uh, techniques used with the, with the outcome of the rally. And then you can see, um, how successful it was. So it's it's very easy because we have quantitative data and you can work with this quantitative data. The next approach, if you if you have uh, quantitative data, um, it's possible that you you have a lot of data. And and the the second um, approach in table tennis or general approach in, in in sport is the calculation of performance indices. Um, performance uh, performance index is like a way of presenting a lot of data in only one number. So here's an example combined with approaches based on, on the number of ball contacts. Um, and here is your table. This is um, the statistic for one player. Um, line one and two show the incidences for scoring and losing a point with the respective shot number. So these are... Uh, Incidences. So this is nothing special. But the third and the fourth line are showing an index, um, the scoring and the using usage rate. And uh, this means like the usage rate, because if you only have the numbers uh, in the first or second line, you know, okay, he scored four points with his receive, but made 10 receive mistakes. But you don't actually know if this is a big deal or not, or you don't know the, the whole picture. And the usage rate gives you um, or explains how many rallies from all rallies ended with the second stroke. So you see here, actually 25% of all rallies ended with the second stroke. The scoring date then gives you the information of how many percentage you won at the second stroke. So the second stroke ended at 14 um, rallies and from four out of 14, which is 29%, you scored. So with only with two, index with these two indices 
you know the whole picture because you know the second they really ended in 25 percent at the second stroke and you only made 29 percent of these strokes so then you already compare how important it was and you can get some advice maybe where to yeah have a closer look in the match um so in, and in this case it's for sure um you need to to analyze um your receive game if, if if this was not that good or why it was not that good or if the the, the opponent has a very strong um, serving game so these are first uh, yeah incidences or advices where to have a closer look in your match analysis um the second approach would be the three phase method it's more or less the same not related to the single stroke but in the three phase method the the rally is divided in three phases the first phase is the serve and the third stroke of one player. The second phase is the receive and the fourth stroke of a player. And the third phase is everything which is longer than the fourth shot, so the, the, the rally phase. And then you can calculate the same indices and showing if your serve and first attack game is quite strong, or if your receive and uh, first counter attack game is very strong, or if you're dominating the, the opponent in the wrong, long rallies. The, the last approach I want to mention within the quantitative methods is the yeah, momentum analysis. Next slide, please. Um, this is a quite pragmatic approach, and this is about the visualization of the dynamics in a match. So you want to show hot hand phases or also like explore turning points during the match where you have been quite good and then yeah, you, you lost a lot of points. Um, and these turning points or these hot momentum phases can be a reason for a more in-depth analysis. So you get very fast um, an advice where to look closer again um, or what happened there in particular. Um, you have multiple options to calculate it. The easiest way would be just if you make a point, you go one up. If you lose a point, you go one down. But this is um, yeah maybe too easy because it's very um, fluctuating. So uh, in most cases, you, you calculate the, the current momentum by using the past rallies and by also using future rallies. So of course, this only can be done after the match, but um, you always want to measure the current momentum in relation to past rallies, but also in future rallies. So if you lose a point, um, but won the next five points, you still have the momentum maybe. So it's not directly about losing the momentum if you lose one point. And this is another, method to show quite fast incidences or where where something happened. So you don't need to watch the whole match, but you can look at specific times in the match where something maybe important happened. But all those quantitative methods pro produce quite objective and re reliable information. But the, the practical usefulness, if you see this graph, is a little bit limited because you only get these quantitative statistics on how successful certain things have been or when something happens, but you don't get really information about the context or maybe why it was successful. And that's the reason why you need the second general type of methods. Next slide, please. So the, the second general type of methods are qualitative methods. Which, which I would describe as a su subjective impression analysis. So in this, uh, with this method, performance is, is assessed by reconstruction and more interpretation. And, and for that, the observer is using a wealth of information where uh, the variables actually are not fixed before. So the, the observer is using his or her expertise for the analysis or his knowledge. Um, this is a very uh, flexible process. So the analysis is always open for new variables and you can also measure, measure things or, or analyze things which cannot be quantified. Typical element in table tennis would be if the, the, the daily work of a coach in the training, the coaches are observing performance and they are evaluating the athlete's performance based on their knowledge of the sport. And during your training, you, you have the option to intervene and provide feedback on whatever you think might be important. So it's not strictly standardized and it's not limited. And this kind of analysis is, is necessary because the, the quality of execution is, is rarely a black or white issue. So it's, it's not really possible to, to quantify it. Um, some things can't be measured. If the 
if the movement is a little bit more to the top or uh, too much down or whatever. So this is hard to quantify. And sometimes it's also too much uh, effort to quantify it. So it's easier to use the, the knowledge and the expertise and do a qualitative uh, analysis. The strength already mentioned is that it's not limited to the observable variables. You can use background knowledge. You can use the context. For example, if someone is not doing a, a technique correctly because he was injured, then it's it's because of the injury. And if you don't know this, you will judge the player differently than in, in, in the case you if you know the, that he has an injury. But the qualitative methods are also good, for example, to, to sense psychological pressure in the game or to compare your actual performance with the tactical plans. If you compare only the performance and you have quantitative statistics, but you don't know what the actual tactic was before the game, then you would maybe judge different. Um, yeah, the, the thing is you, you're using expertise and knowledge for this analysis, but the thing is you also need expertise and knowledge to do this. So this is a big prerequisite, uh, uh, completely um, yeah, foreign uh, coach who is not working in table tennis has a problem to, to do a correct technical analysis with, with his uh, expertise because he has no knowledge. So um, this, is, this is more about judgment than measurement. And, and of course, this is important because you want to measure quality, which is a subjective thing in most of the cases. But for that, you need the expertise. And because this is a completely subjective approach, it's, it's hard to give yeah, examples like I have done for the quantitative methods, but um, typical situations um, where this kind of analysis is used, as explained, are the training or also if a coach watches a match and analyzing the opponent and share his opinion about general strengths and weaknesses. And, and by presenting this, this uh, kind of analysis as an official method in performance analysis seems maybe to be a little bit strange for some of the, the participants because it's, it's not objective. It cannot really be described how you should do it because it's a really individual thing. But actually, this is the, the point. Some things can't be really measured or it's too expensive to measure it in the daily work. And so, some things are completely individual and sometimes you need to have various background knowledge and decide things on an on inv individual level. And that's why you need these qualitative methods. Next slide, please. But as explained, um, both methods, uh, unfortunately, are not perfect especially for the practical use. Um, as mentioned for the quantitative methods, um, the, the strengths and weaknesses may not be derived directly from, from quantitative statistics only because you need to talk about quality as well. Um, and they are limited to the observable surface. So you cannot talk about pressure or you cannot talk about um, tactical plans and so on. The problems for the qualitative methods are that they are not systematical because there are no guidelines. And then again, uh, I need to mention the, the limited recall ability of a human. So this is this is a problem. If you do the qualitative analysis, it's subjective, but sometimes maybe it's too subjective or too emotional. So the thing is, um, the strength of one type of method are actually the weaknesses of the other one and vice versa. So to, to solve this problem is to combine the, a quantitative and a qualitative method. Next point, please. Yes, this is this is the solution to, to combine um, these two methods. And by combining these, uh, yeah, you're still not, uh, yeah, it's, it's not necessary to, to use a certain technology for that. But of course, um, to combine both methods, video technology might be a necessary tool. Um, when we are talking about match analysis, I would say video analysis is what most players or, or coaches are, are thinking of. But uh, it, it's actually the state of the art to use video analysis, but it's not that easy to just use video. Next slide, please. So because um, the major problems mentioned in the last slide are not directly solved by using video. Um, there we have to talk about what video analysis mean. I would say for most of the people I know, um, 
video analysis doesn't matter if it's a technical or tactical analysis video analysis is just the same like i'm using video footage somehow so of course this is already an advantage to to live analysis because you can do replay you can do slow motion etc and this is good option for for detailed analysis of serves for example to replay but in most cases um my experience for for match analysis players and coaches have recorded matches or searching the internet for matches of upcoming opponents they the the video footage is used for just a subjective impression analysis to get the strength and the weaknesses of course you can get information about some qualities of your opponent um but as the analysis might not be so systematic the the information can be biased by emotion again or is not objective or complete enough so this is one problem if you just use the video itself as a video like watching tv um but even if you if you are an analyst or a motivated coach who is actually doing notational analysis using video footage to get quantitative objective statistics the standalone statistics are are quite tricky for the practical use um as they are very theoretical the problem of the quantitative statistics so to solve this is if you're using video technology or video footage this is just a source and of course you can have benefit but the main advantage of the the video footage is if you're doing it in a in a smart way with with the right tools you can easily connect quantitative the the strengths of quantitative methods with the strengths of the qualitative methods and then you can benefit from both methods and you're consequently eliminating all the weaknesses of the other one and and this is i would say the the comprehensive approach which i think is is the most successful one and this is the one i want to to talk about in the next slide so um in this slide um it's it's a model about performance of the procedure this is this is not a tutorial about using specific tools or software it's more about showing the the general process and its single steps and how the single steps are are realized this is a complete individual thing so i'm i'm not talking about software or or you you already know some methods but it's still an individual thing so um the first thing which you needs to if which you need to take into account is um there are two things which are controlling the daily life of an athlete this is training and competition next point please um and these are the starting points for for the comprehensive video analysis approach as well so when we are talking about match analysis the first step or video analysis the first step of course is to get the video footage of the match next point so but then there's the important part after you get the video next point please and next point please yes um this is the important part and and which i would say is is the door opener for a comprehensive approach you need to do a coupling of video sequences with quantitative data and um to explain this you you're doing yeah quite normal notational analysis but you're not doing on its own or on a paper or in an excel sheet but you want to combine it with the video and this is what we call the video tagging so so actually you have separated scenes of of uh, of a match in most cases these are the single rallies and then you mark the respective scenes with your tags and these are these tags are the predefined variables um with the with the defined attributes like for example you you tag the server of the rally you take the winner of the rally you take the, the rally length the surf technique and so on if if you're uh, analyzing the strokes you're taking the technique the placement used and this is the important part you're doing notational analysis but you're combining it with the with the with the video and this is the data gathering part still after this data gathering part you come to the big analysis part next point please and this analysis part contains now two different steps after you have video tagged the the uh, the match you can do quantitative pre-structuring so you you're selecting scenes with your quantitative um, statistics or filters for example um 
you only want to see the your points where you used a certain serve or a certain receive technique. So so this is the way um, of getting complete data and objective data. And of course, this is uh, depending on your notation analysis and, and what you're looking for. Um, but you get objective statistics. And after you, you pre-selected your match with um, objective statistics, you can have a closer look um, why something happens or what actually happens or the context within a rally. So um, with, the, with the quantitative statistics, you only get what or when, but not the how or not the quality. And this is why you add your expertise to this quantitative data. You 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 int, you do an interpretation. What was good? What was what changed? Or, or what was technical stuff? So you you use the strengths of both methods. The next point of the whole process is what I told before. Uh, I would call it performance analysis meetings. Um, this is very individual. Of course, you have analyzed the match, and now. You want to present the this information, um, or you want to 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 give this information to to the coaches. But this can be completely individual. Sometimes only the coach meets with the analyst, the player meets with the analyst. But as mentioned before, sometimes the analyst can also meet with the psychologist uh, or all three of them. So it's completely individual process. Um, you are presenting your data based on statistics and qualitative analysis, and based on this. You have individual topics to talk about. And if you have experienced um, coaches or experienced players, I would say it's rather a discussion. You talk about technical things, um, technical things, motivational things. If you have young players, it's more about giving them something um, what they have to follow. If you have experienced one, I would say a good process is always about discussion. And the most important thing in this performance analysis meeting, why you have done the quantitative and the qualitative method is when you're presenting it or when you're talking a bit about it, you have to show the respective video uh, sequences because players or coaches can do qualitative analysis um, also, or they just get the proof. So if you're talking about, okay, your serve was not good, your percentage of this technique was not good, then players cannot imagine what you're talking about. But if you show them the 10 rallies where they used technique not uh, in a good way, they know this. And this is the thing because 65% of people are visual learners. So you need always to combine quantitative methods or qualitative methods and give a feedback and mostly a visual feedback. And when they're getting this feedback, they can include it in the training. So this is about um, yeah, enhancing the training. So uh, for example, uh, as I said, told you, you show them sequences, the players know what to work and the coaches know what to work on, and then they include it into the training. And um, this is the next step. And after the training, you make the game plan for the next competitions. So sometimes, um, of course, if you're in a tournament and you just want to analyze the opponent, Sometimes there is no training, so sometimes the game plan is directly included in the meeting. But um, this is this is the important thing. You want to give support and information for the training, and therefore you need quantitative statistics, but also qualitative analysis, and you show them in video analysis with the footage so that they can visu visualize your expertise more or less. So this is the, the closing of the of the circle from competition over analysis to training again, and then to competition again. And this is the, the whole process. So the last slide actually are my general comments from, from my practical experiences. Um, yeah, I would say performance analysis can be used in, in multiple purposes. Um, it's a very individual process. Um, it's not relying on where you do it, what you're doing, when you're doing. I have done analysis in hotel rooms. I have done analysis in flights. Actually, players can use it in travel time to, to do an analysis or to get information about players. So, so it's a way um, of, of work you can do more or less everywhere and whenever you have time. So it's not relying on certain circumstances. In the performance analyst, as I told you, can have also different roles. So you can have uh, a supporting role to coaches with materials 
uh, support the psychologist um, most of the times maybe with quantitative methods. But in my opinion, the best option is if the the analyst or the, the one who is doing the analysis is included um, or is a part of the whole process because then you have some background knowledge and you can do a better qualitative analysis. So, but if you are, if you want to be included in the process, of course, you need to have some expertise. That's why in most of the cases, a good analyst maybe was also involved in coaching before. The second point I want to mention is um, what I needed to learn, unfortunately, um, don't force players or coaches um, to do analysis, but show them possible benefits. So, um, for example, uh, one problem is performance analysis needs time and players and coaches, uh, especially uh, the one who are not used to spend uh, doing uh, performance analysis, if you ask them, uh, do you want to spend one hour in a, in a room to make analysis or one hour in the, in the venue to practice, I would say 99% are deciding for, for the practice because the other thing is too theoretical. But for example, you can support this in analysis because just the, the video taking or cutting the match saves so much time. So uh, in my experience, you cut down the match to 20% of the time. So a half an hour match is only like six minutes. And I would say a lot of percentage would take six minutes to do an analysis, but not a half an hour. So this is one simple advantage you can have from, from this uh, kind of work. And um, yeah, this, this is just one example. So don't force the players or coaches, but show them possible benefits. The third point is, um, unfortunately, the, the performance analysis is a very underrated uh, area in a lot of sports. So my solution would be integrated in in the education and make it part of the, the weekly routine. If you're working with young ages um, and they are used to do it, it's the same like they're used to physical uh, work. So why they should not be used to do tactical analysis, for example, and they are also gaining additional knowledge. If, if one part of the week is half an hour tactical analysis, they are used to it and they would not complain. So this is, this is a thing you, you need to create the good environment in which is normal or the players feel comfortable to doing that and invest also sometimes. So the next point is um, also a very important one. You need a personal relationship between the, the coaches and the analysts or the analysts and the players. Um, the coaches or analysts, they yeah, need to trust you somehow because you're giving them data. They, they want to rely on that data and therefore you need to have some trust or also a good relationship because you know if you don't like your coach or if you don't trust your coach you you will not listen to him and the same is for the coach and, and analysis uh, relationship or the player and the analysis relationship so this is an important part and the last one uh, i want to mention is communication or presentation is key the the role of feedback is central in the performance improvement process so and and to ensure the feedback is effective um you need to have good presentation. This is again, a very individual thing. There's again, you need a relationship to the players. If you know the players, you can present the information how they want it. And in the end, it's, it's not important what you know, it's important what you can impart on people or in the players. So this is the, the last message I want to give um, for the lecture. Yeah, so I hope it didn't take too long. Um, the last slide are just um, maybe some interesting uh, literature about this topic uh, where you can um, have a look at. Um, uh, and with these words, I, I want to close my uh, lecture and I'm looking forward to some questions maybe. So thank you very much, uh, Michael, for this great and very informative uh, lecture. And um, yeah, there are of course uh, a few questions from our side. And uh, for this reason, I would like to pass over to my colleague, to Max. Yeah, well, I was, uh, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Michael. That was great. Uh, and uh, I, I have to say that if you want to 
uh, to to have uh, like professional uh, professional team players uh, um, coaches. Uh, this is a figure of the of the analyst, sports specific analyst, uh, which is uh, which is a key, which is an important role, you know, to, to fill up, uh, let's say, the staff around the, around the the, yeah. the play. So. Um, I think it, this is uh, this is something that many many teams, professional teams, they should uh, they should be interested uh, uh, on. Uh, well, my question was more a curiosity because you mentioned just uh, at the very end uh, how long it takes to to have a to have a, a reliable uh, you know um, let's say uh, performance analysis. Because you have to you collect mean, this, as you say, you know, and you you make a notational. You have a video. Uh, so many things are there, and uh, yeah, there is no time actually. So how long it takes? Uh, you you mean the the analysis process, not the presentation the presentation of information. So this is completely individual. So it, it depends how in in depth you want to do the analysis. Um, Usually, I would say, uh, for example, if you do normal um, daily analysis, notational work and analyzing not every stroke in, in the match, for sure you need for one hour match, you need a few hours or also maybe one day. But this is this is the work for the from the analysis. This is not the work from the athletes. So this is how, how your supporting role um, works. Um, of course, you, you want to condense the, the analysis, which maybe takes a few hours to a very short time because this is what you, you present. Um, this is hard to answer. This is also a training for the analyst because if, <laughs> if I would give you the instructions, you would take maybe much longer than me because I have done it uh, many times. So this is also a process where you can get quite fast. So depending, I would say. Well, may, uh, maybe what, what I understood, maybe, you know, so when you, when you have a player that, uh, uh, you want to identify maybe some uh, yeah some weakness or, or some uh, recurring problem. Maybe you try to select, make a sort of a selection yes. where uh, where you where you have to uh, I don't know like uh, um, normally at the end of the game uh, my serve yes. goes always long for example you know so it's something yes. like that so maybe uh, the, the the previous work is to. Uh, to select uh, what is the the area or the strokes uh, or the situation where you have to maybe to make uh, you know the in-depth uh, analysis. I think yes, uh, maybe this, this, this can this save also, time. <laughs> yeah, but but th this is also um, how can I say uh, to start uh, analysis is also based on a maybe certain question, and for this question, what you want to analyze, coaches and players have sort of feeling you know you already know what you maybe should look at but you don't know exactly what the results are so um it's uh, you know you can as you said you can look at placements you can look at techniques you can at, look at certain phases of the match um, and you start your analysis always with one or two questions in, in in my case so you started with one or two questions then you're looking at these situations and then you do the analysis if you want it's not possible you know to to analyze all you know everything so okay. so uh, table tennis uh, uh, match contains i don't know 10000 actions so yeah. it's it's impossible yeah. to to analyze that absolutely yeah Do dominic you also you have a um, i have one more but i keep for later on please dominic thank you very much massimo um yeah i i do have a question for you michael uh, what, what is your general approach regarding uh, the positioning of the device or can be also devices as in some, uh, you know, situations we do know that we need more cameras, you know, uh, during yeah. the competition or the practice. Uh, from my point of view, it's it's from the highest importance to, to know where to place the devices, you know, depending on the on the goal, you know. Uh, so yeah. what is your approach? So, so if, it, if it's about match analysis, um, of course, uh, that's why it's good if you are like a person from outside and not the coach, because if you're putting your camera uh, as a coach directly behind the barriers, you're not covering the whole table or a lot of uh, the table is covered by the player. So in, in my case, I would prefer always a position which is a little bit higher and 
from one side so you can cover most of the table um, and it's not covered by the player or by something else and of course it's also depending if you have two righties or lefties um, so you have to to change but I would say the best um, is from from a little bit upstairs from the side so you have a, have a good view on everything um, that that would be my my approach but okay People like it if it's very close. People like it if it's far away. You know, this is depending also on the purpose. If you want to get a big picture of the whole match, you need to cover the whole match. If you only want to analyze technical stuff of your player, you get closer to the table and you are only uh, covering your player. So this is also okay. But um, this this would be my approach. So it's it's individual thing, and there is no there, there's not the 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 one hundred percent solution for for everyone. So thank you very much uh, for sharing your opinion. And I, I have a, a second small question uh, regarding, you know, related to this topic. And uh, what is your opinion uh, combining the, the video analysis with using physical measurements like heart rate uh, monitors or speed sensors? I mean, of course, during the, the competition, it's of maybe also disturbing the players. So what is your opinion? Would you this, go for this? Is this is actually a very big topic in, in science right now because these variables, we call it, um, are more and more popular. You know, if you, you're watching uh, soccer uh, at the preparation phase, they are wearing these, these uh, uh, things to, to measure their, their placement or their velocities or their speeds. And of course, I would say it would be very beneficial also for table tennis, but uh, you will never get players uh, to, to the that they are wearing something during the competition. If even if it's only like a watch who is who is measuring heart rate, if somebody is not used to wear a watch, he will not uh, wear it during the competition. I think it might get very interesting uh, or give very interesting data where you can get a lot of benefit from it. But but that's again, it's not popular in the sport, so it's hard to change things. If if for example, if you uh, introduce it for young players, they are more open to this because they are not used to the situation in the last 20, 30 years. And there you can do a lot of measurements. Uh, also, maybe during the match. And then you can get data and you can see, okay, his speed in the arm is not fast enough. You, can, you have to work on that. Uh, this, is, this is very, very important, I would say. But to get this data from top-level professional players right now, almost impossible, I would say. Okay, thank you very much, Michael. And uh, pass over to you, Max, for the next question. Yeah, that's that is related to uh, you mentioned in the beginning to the to the perception of the of the player. You know what the player feels actually, and uh, what we can uh, actually show uh, through the uh, analysis. Uh, maybe maybe the perception is not uh, coinciding. Uh, but the thing is that uh, uh, the, the the performance of the of a player is always depending on the performance of the opponents. So uh, uh, what they do, it's not that it's, a, it's, it's, it's a something individual, totally single action. It comes from a feedback. Let's call it a feedback. Yes. So how to make the the proper, let's say, um, to, to to how we should proceed actually. How, how is the, the, the to make it valid and reliable? So is so, a mistake so that we have done, or is the opponent's uh, uh, let's say um, great shot? Yes. Yeah, so so this this is again um, about qualitative analysis because there you need some expertise to actually judge this. Um, the thing is that's what it makes so tricky for for game sports where you're always influenced by the opponent. For, I don't know, 100 meter running, it's very easy to, to give advice what you need to practice or what you need to have to be a good uh, runner. But for table tennis, it's always depending. And that's why you, you have to see, uh, you cannot make general statements and also not from quantitative statistics because it's a very individual thing. And you need to make single case analysis about the specific player. So if I play against you, Massimo, it's a different thing than if I play against uh, Dominic. So, so uh, you have different kind of, of techniques, and that's why, uh, yeah, you you that's why you you come or you need this qualitative analysis because sometimes, as you said, it's not about your strengths; it's about or your weakness. It's about the strength of the opponent, and this the is opponent. also it's it's always like you you 
need to find an answer on a certain question. And the answer or the question can be the other one is quite good or the answer is you are quite bad. So it's, it's yeah, very individual thing. That is fascinating from my point of view. It's really, really uh, a world where you can discover so many, so many things. So uh, thank you very much again for uh, your, uh, your knowledge, uh, Dominic, uh, again to you. Thank you very much, Massimo. And uh, I would like uh, to ask you the last question, Michael. Uh, if we check uh, scientific papers and articles uh, nowadays, the use of the following two terms uh, is very common and modern, I would say. The first term is performance prerequisite and the second one are the performance indicators. Could you explain us in a, let's say, quite simple way what these two terms mean? Yeah, the, the, the prerequisites um, is the, the thing which you need to have to, to, uh, yeah, to, to perform. So these are the things, um, for example, to, to make a fast topspin, you need certain strengths. So the, the prerequisite is the strength and the, the indicators are the things where you can measure this or where you, where you can show these things actually. So the um, thing is uh, performance is not always performance, you know. The things you can actually do, you're not always showing but you have some prerequisites where you can work on. So you're not actually working on your performance, but you're working on your prerequisites. This is how, how I would, would explain it. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Michael. And uh, I now I have to say again, thank you very much, because uh, we want to thank you very much for sharing your, your knowledge, your experience, your thoughts and expertise, and for giving us so many interesting insights into this a topic of highest importance. Um, now all, all of us uh, got to, to know more about sports performance and uh, video analysis in general, which can be seen as, a, as a Michael mentioned before, as a discipline of sports science concerned with the analysis of actual performance. Good decisions should be uh, based on evidence because it is very normal for us uh, to not be able to remember all different kind of scenarios uh, which um, appeared in the in the past. Uh, so uh, yeah, Michael mentioned it before, and there are a lot of uh, a lot of application areas for this uh, kind of topic. It's not just about the coaching, it's also about the judging, the media, the academical thing, and of course also the educational part. Um, and regarding to, to Michael's opinion, it's a uh, very important, but unfortunately still underestimated part, the educational part. Uh, we do use analysis for the technical and tactical parts. These two areas are very much uh, connected with each other. Beside that, analysis is also used for analyzing the effectiveness and physiological and also psychological aspects, especially the last point, the psychological aspects. Uh, they, they are in, in important in some cases also unpleasant, you know, uh, can, can lead to unpleasant situations because it's, uh, it, it's about to confront the athlete with his or her behavior and uh, which can be a very good option to show also the athlete the third uh, person view. Uh, but uh, as uh, Michael mentioned, um, we should not force uh, the coaches and athletes to do the analysis, but to show them the benefits of it. Uh, sports performance analysis is very much individual. For example, the gathering of the data, the communication and presentation to the athletes and coaches is from utmost importance presented in a way uh, that the stakeholders understand the message and guidelines can be very helpful for the observer. If you have standardized guidelines, it raises the objectivity and of course you also need to have clear goals and to know uh, what to analyze. Otherwise there is too much information we have uh, to know all the backgrounds when judging because uh, you know, for example, if a, if a player is slightly injured and then the body tries to, to escape from the, from the correct movement, then it's not because of that he has a bad technique or he, she has a bad technique. It's, it's more about the thing that uh, it's not possible. So first of all, we have to know the background. 
And last but not least, it is very important to keep it as simple as possible and to contain a lot of data. In our case, it's about numbers within one number in the best case. So bear in mind, it can be done everywhere, as Michael mentioned. And I would like also to thank all of you for your interest and attendance, and I'm looking forward to our next webinar. And it will be on next Wednesday at uh, 1 p.m. Uh, Central European Summer Time. And the topic will be inspiring women in table tennis. And we will have great panelists. Uh, Naina Yashwell from India. She's an international table tennis player and the youngest postgraduate in Asia. The next one is Melissa Tepper from Australia. She won the gold medal at the 2018 Commonwealth Games and she was the first Australian athlete to qualify for the Olympics and Paralympics. And last but not least, Beatrice Romanescu from Romania. She was the former women's coordinator in the ATTU and also the former chairwoman. And currently she is the PR and marketing manager of the Romanian Table Tennis Federation. Uh, beside that, I would like to inform you about our new lesson series. It's called the ITTF High Performance and Development for Classes with Massimo Costantini, which we will kick off this Friday at 3 p.m. Central European Summertime. This lesson, uh, the first lesson, will be covering uh, topics related to the level of beginners. For further information, please visit our ITTF High Performance and Development Facebook page. Hope to see you in our future webinars and lessons. And that's all from my side for today. Pass over to you, Max, and I kindly ask you for the closing words. Yeah, thank you, Dominic. Uh, uh, well, I have to say that after the presentation of uh, Michael, I, I'm sure we have, uh, we have more people got uh, uh, passionate on this uh, performance analysis because it's, it is very, very interesting matter and uh, whoever working in table tennis uh, as, uh, as, a, as a player, as a coach, uh, as a staff, uh, it is definitely super, super important uh, to take care of this uh, important, uh, important area which, uh, which uh, nowadays is coming really crucial. So again, thank you very much one more time, uh, Michael. And uh, I hope uh, you like today our table tennis uh, knowledge with the expertise. And thank you very much, Dominique. Thank you all and uh, see you soon. Ciao. Thank you all. See you soon. Bye-bye. See you.